there's my on button. All right. Well, I just thought I'll kind of, you know, Brian's always just talking at this point. So talk. Hi. Hi. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right. Brian is usually talking. Well, he's asking about sports and stuff, but, you know, I don't know any sports or anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that baseball's going somewhere. Are what other youth sports are there now? Well, the Olympics, yeah. Like, is soccer over? Does people? I don't know what the. I should stop talking because I. The Olympic trials are on, and I now know what a perfect dive is. So, <laughs> if you watch enough, they tell you, and then they draw it out for you. Well, good evening. Welcome to worship. Uh, special welcome to folks who might be online. I am Pam Larrabee Zirath. I am a retired deacon of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which um, is a minister of word and service. The pastor is a minister of word and sacrament. So a little bit different, but um, I've been in ministry 35 years, so, you know, I got some of it down. So tonight we're going to, uh, we were, I was inspired by the gospel lesson this week. And so we're going to have a healing service. I'm, we aren't going to have communion, but we're going to have a healing service. And so we'll walk you through that. But um, hopefully you have the service. Well, I guess we're going to have the service up. Oh, here's a couple people. I'll just wait and chat a little bit more. Um, Cheryl's also a deacon, a retired deacon. And my husband is a retired chemist. <laughs> spouse of deacon <laughs> so welcome all right do we have our words up a service of healing i'll talk a little bit about it as we get closer to the part that's going to be the healing part um i i rearranged the service a little bit so that's why you're going to need the slides or a piece of paper <clears throat> and so let us give thanks to our holy God who desires wholeness and health for all people. God the Father, you desire wholeness and health for all people. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Is it up there? It's different words? You know, if I skip down to the Holy Spirit, that happens. No, that's what it is. God, our Father, you call us. All right, now we're ready. Next one. God the Son, you came so that we might have abundant life. God the Holy Spirit, you sustain us with your presence. Holy Trinity, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Hear, o Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, 
You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. We offer you our prayers for whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation, in the world, and all creation. We pray especially for communities in Northwest Iowa and surrounding states who face catastrophic flooding for communities covered from recent severe storms, from all who lack adequate shelter, from extreme temperatures, for justice and peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Russia and Ukraine, Haiti, and South Sudan, for your healing grace to all who are sick, injured or lonely, or anxious that they may be made whole, for wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience to physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to those who are suffering, for public and political discourse that respects the dignity and humanity of all, for the freedom in gift of freedom in Christ that binds us to the needs and dignity of our neighbors. Amen. All right, we move to the word, which somebody said, it's a long one. Well, it is. But you know, I really got attached to it this week. Um, and so I didn't even really notice that it was that long until I saw it here. It's a stories of healing, and so that's where we're, why we're talking about healing. Um, and there were sort of... It, do you remember Jesus was in a boat last we heard about him? And so Jesus, in his boat, went over across to Galilee, which is a Gentile region. And so he went over to Galilee and healed somebody of... Uh, severe case of demons. <laughs> and so uh, he finished that, and he got back in the boat and came back over here. And then that's uh, where we are in terms of the, he just come, came back from across, the, and it was a calm one, evidently, because we didn't hear anything about it. So I'll read it, and then we can talk a little bit. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be weighed well and live. So Jesus went with them. A large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Do you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of the, your disease. While he was speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When they had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and 
those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this. And then he said, Peter, have something to eat. So, as I read that, um, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff going on for a lot of people. Um, but what Jesus continues to show us from his other stories and this is what the reign of God looks like. So uh, uh, the other thing you'll notice is that the, this is all the commentators assured me that this is a specialty of Mark is called a sandwich style. So that there's one story and then we have a little interruption, we have another story, and then the last story. So he could, they call that sandwich style. Um, the other thing that I really liked is where they were talking about how the crowd uh, came up and got around him. The word, now this is from Brian's favorite person that gives us the in, uh, translations. The word for that is squeezed. So the crowd saw him and they squeezed in around him. So we've got Jarius and we've got the woman and a very short show of the girl. And uh, both, are, both Jarius and the woman approach, approach Jesus with hope. And they just hope that there's someone who can hear their cry. They both are a little, you know, worried about their thing. So uh, imagine Jarius, he's coming in and he's pushing his way through. I'm, I was thinking, you know, if my daughter was sick, really sick and I thought she was dying, or I, even my cat, I mean, you know, you get attached to my parents and that feeling you get when, you're, when they're sick, you don't know if they're gonna make it and you just kind of feel sick to your stomach. And, and Jarius, who is leader of the synagogue, I don't know if he heard the news that, that the sy other synagogue leaders didn't really like him, right? <laughs> didn't like Jesus. But um, he didn't care because he needed help for his daughter. So he shoved his way through the crowd. And you know, being the leader of the synagogue, he probably had some people got out of his way because, you know, he's the leader of the synagogue. Pastor Brian, right, can walk through a crowd in St. John because he figure he's got some place to go. So um, pushes his way through and he falls at Jesus' feet and says, please, please, please. So Jesus re says, okay, let's go. At that point, he's probably felt a little bit of his stomach untightening because now Jesus is moving at it. And then we're walking along and Jesus stops and turns around. So suddenly I bet his stomach is starting to feel <laughs> sick again. And it's like, okay, we'll just pause for a minute. And uh, then he kind of looks out and he says, okay, who is it? Now, same person said that the word who is feminine there. So Jesus actually knew uh, that it was a woman that he was looking for. He probably knew which woman, right? <laughs> and so waiting for her to come forward. And she came up and told about it. And uh, so she would had this illness for 12 years, which is a long time to have an illness. But in the purity laws of the time, it also meant that she couldn't be around anybody. So by shoving her way through the crowd, she was actually breaking those purity laws because everybody she touched was un unclean in those words. And it's important to remember that the purity laws aren't moral laws. So it's not like um, anybody who is unclean is a sinner. They're, the problem is that they're trying to uh, keep them separated. And you know, it, it, in some ways it makes sense. Think of COVID, right? <laughs> and so the first thing we had to do is not be around each other. And we had to, we were required to wear a mask and, or recommended. And so what did we do to wear the mask for? Two reasons. Right, protect ourselves and not give it to others. And so there's something about the purity laws that made uncleanness kind of contagious like that. And so if, if for some reason you, it was uh, like bleeding and death and other sicknesses that, um, was that me? 
I'm sorry. So anyway, um, so it was all these different things that, uh, that, but remember, it's not morally wrong. Let's see, blood, disease, and death is what I said. So um, it requires that person leave. You know, you, we hear a lot about the lepers being put away, but regularly other people were put away. And then what you do after you, why ever you're unclean gets fixed, then you come back to the priest and they have a little sacrifice and then you're considered clean again. So not only has she been sick for 12 years, and I should think losing blood, you would kind of also be weak and kind of right, feeling bad. Um, she also has been isolated for 12 years. So, and then we hear that she paid a lot for the doctors, so we know that she was economically deprived. And so, we have all kind of been around people who are sick, and she, they probably didn't mind that they weren't around her. But, the important thing about this woman is that she was determined, she was more than her illness, and she was not gonna give up on living a good life and she was willing to do something desperate, so she pushed her way through because she knew it would help and she could just go on her way. But Jesus noticed, and so at once she, con once she confesses, what does Jesus say? Hmm? Yep, you did it. It was your faith that you are healed now. And then, um, at Poor Jarius is still sitting there, right, tapping his toe. Can we get going here? And wouldn't you know it, it's just about that moment that uh, his, some of his servants push their way through and say, don't bother the teacher, uh, she's dead. So I would think that, that Jarius' whole heart would have fallen out at that point um, to think that this, and it's like, okay, you don't want to push Jesus, right? But man, maybe I should have pushed him harder to get there. So uh, when, he was, when Jarius heard that, what do you think was going on in his mind? And his worst fear came true. And so what did Jesus say to Jarius? Don't be afraid. Have faith. And uh, I heard that some people named their boats that. <laughs> Which if I was going to have a boat, that would be a good name for me because I don't like boats. So... Um, I wouldn't, right, I wouldn't have a boat, so I don't need to name it. So then Jesus makes it there, and he, he gets there, and the, the, you know, they had professional mourners at that time. So, boy, they got there fast, <laughs> and they started with their wailing and everything. And Jesus said, well, you don't need to be doing that. She's not dead. And then they laughed at him, and all of the commentators uh, kind of assumed that it was rude laughter, kind of sneering, oh, you dopey man kind of thing. So they, uh, he went in and he held her hand and he r pulled her up and restored her. And then I just love it. He says, feed her. <laughs> She's hungry now. So Jesus breaks a, a barrier by touching a child, by having an unclean person touch him, which officially makes him unclean, right? But he t breaks that barrier and says, uh, all are in community. The important thing that we skipped on the woman who touched him is that he said, daughter, your faith has made us well. And uh, you know, that's like, he's calling daughter, that's, I'm now Jesus's daughter, or like when we we're baptized, we're God's daughter. And so uh, she suddenly has a, a family along with, of course, the community that she can go back to so, when people are anguished, whether long-term or not long-term, uh, their God is touched by their pain, and he's reaching out in healing and wholeness. Remember, wholeness, Brian talks about how it's shalom, shalom is all, well and all that, all, all kinds of places in our lives. And so... Um, Talitha Koum, little one, get up. Now, that was me babbling on and on, but if you heard something in there that you were interested in, I really would be interested in hearing what you have to say. I'm just curious, why you certainly ordered that last one. 
you know, he does that through Mark. And, you know, the, the commentators don't ever really give you a good answer for that. Um, some of it is that it's like he's leaking the news about the kingdom out. And so he doesn't want it suddenly to go awry or something. But I really don't know. But they are not the only people who have been told not to tell anybody. The disciples get told that a lot, like transfiguration. Don't tell anybody what you saw. So I don't know. I know. There's people who are singing. There's the people who came and got them. Somebody's making her food, you know, and they all think she's dead. So you know that he's going to get the news is out. I mean, that's the strange thing about all the time when he tells people don't say anything and they go out and say something. Well, of course they do. So I don't know. I don't know why you would do that because you'd think they'd know. Right. Because they're squeezing. Yes. Yeah. Why would you say he asked that? I mean, I know my sister used to say that to me, <laughs> but she was, it wasn't any miracle that happened. It was get out of my clothes. Well, I, if you think about who Jesus is, he's really, he's about relationship and he's about community. And so he wants people to see her healed, but he wants a relationship with her. He calls her daughter. And so um, because he's, he's relational, because, you know, he's actually touched person. He got touched, and then later on he touches the child. Um, he's a person that, that is relational. That's, and so he probably knew all about her, and um, then there she was, and he says, daughter, your faith made you well. Right. Right. Well, and you know, she knew that she was breaking all that purity laws, shoving, shoving through a crowd, touching the teacher. You know, all of that was, um, and so it, that's sort of the guilty consciences of somebody who confesses. I took a pack of gum <laughs> to his mom. Um, so I'm sure that she knew that she was breaking the law, and that was kind of what is uh, uh, audacious. They talked about audacious hope. She had audacious hope because she was willing to uh, get it, you know, and work worked for it. Because she was unclean. Yeah. Right. It's been acknowledged, it's out, and it's a whole again. She's experiencing shalom. Right. They dismiss him, and the yeah. mourners dismiss him, yeah. you know. I'm counting on him being a patient person. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um,
Yes. Right. Numbers are significant. I think 12 is kind of a, you know, it's the tribes. 12 is a lot in the Old Testament in terms of tribes, or 12. So I think that's probably where they kind of get it. But um, I don't know that Mark's congregation would be that into it. But what that means is that woman was sick as long as that child was alive. And so it again connects the, her life with her life. Because on the same moment then, they both were healed. Well, not the same moment, same day. But yes, and they, see Mark does that. All these things are real deliberate in these gospels of ours. And, uh, but if you don't, if you don't read the, about them, then it's like, I don't know why, and you just move on with your day. But it's a good, yeah. Well, I'm going to go through the story one more time. And I invite you to shut your eyes and to imagine the characters as they interact with Jesus. I'm going to tell it um, from a uh, Bible that sort of tells it as a story, not so much as a text. So um, I invite you to get comfortable and shut your eyes, and we'll hear the story once again. As Jesus returned across the sea, a large crowd quickly found and squeezed around him. One of the leaders of the synagogue, a man named Jairus, came and fell at Jesus' feet, begging him to heal his daughter. My daughter is dying. She's only 12 years old. Please come to my house. Just place your hands on her. I know that if you do, she will live. So Jesus began traveling with Jairus toward him, his home. In the crowd pressing around Jesus, there was a woman who had suffered continuous bleeding for 12 years, bleeding that made her ritually unclean and an outcast according to the purity laws. She had suffered greatly, and although she spent all of her money on her medical care, she'd only gotten worse. She had heard of Jesus, so she snuck up behind him in the crowd and reached out her hand to touch his cloak, thinking to herself, even if I touch all I touch are his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her fingers brushed the cloak, the bleeding stopped. She could feel that she was whole again. Lots of people were pressing around Jesus at that moment, but he immediately felt her touch. He felt healing power flow out of him. He stopped. Everyone stopped. He looked around. Who just touched my robe? His disciples broke the uneasy silence. Jesus, the crowd is so thick that everyone's touching you. Why do you ask who touched me? But Jesus waited. His gaze swept across the crowd to see who had done it. At last, the woman, knowing he was asking about her, pushed forward and dropped to her knees. She was shaking with fear and amazement. I touched you. Then she told him the reason why, and Jesus listened to her story. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, while Jesus was speaking, some members of Jairus' household pushed through the crowd. Jairus' servants told Jairus, Your daughter is dead. There's no need to drag the teacher any farther. Jesus overheard their words. Then Jesus turned to look at Jairus. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Jesus asked, everyone but Peter, James, and John to remain outside when they reached Jairus' home inside the synagogue leader's house. The morning, had already, the morning had already begun. The weeping and wailing carried out into the street. Jesus and the three disciples went inside and Jesus asked, why are you making all this sorrowful noise? The child isn't dead, she's just sleeping. The mourners laughed a bitter laugh and went back to their wailing. Jesus cleared the house so that only the disciples, Jairus, and Jairus' wife were inside. They all went to where the child lay. Then Jesus took the child's hand. Talitha kum, little girl, it's time to wake up. Immediately, the 12-year-old opened her eyes, arose, and began to walk. Her parents couldn't believe their eyes. 
Jesus said to the parents, don't tell anybody what you've just seen, but why don't you give her something to eat? I know she's hungry. So hear these words. Jesus' words are to you also. Daughter, son, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Do not be afraid, just believe. So now we'll move on, if I can find my piece of paper. So Terry, can you put the, yeah, that one up. Um, this is mostly for the people, you have it on your sheet of paper if you have the sheet of paper, but this is mostly for the folks at home. Um, in its ministry of healing, the church does not replace the gifts of God that come through the scientific community, nor does it promise a cure. The church offers and celebrates gifts such as these. God's presence with strength and comfort in the time of suffering, God's promise of wholeness and peace, and God's love embodied in the community of faith. Now, typically, um, at healing uh, in the Bible and otherwise, People are anointed with oil. <clears throat> um, often uh, fr fragrance is added, but they're anointed with oil and, uh, pray, and they have a prayer. And so today, that's what we're going to try out here. And I have two things for you. To, you I have one thing is it smells like myrrh and frankincense, which is actually a very nice smell. But if I know that there are people who are very fragrance uh, they have problems with that. So I also have just plain old oil. Um, usually, where did Jesus go to pray after the Last Supper? Mount of Olives. And you know, that, so that place had a lot of olives. And so they uh, typically, olive oil is the, what you use for healing. So what I'm going to do is invite you to uh, come forward. And Terry, you can put yeah, that up. And for those who are at home, I invite you to go ahead and you can pray these prayers. If you're with someone, you're welcome to just even make a sign of a cross. Um, or you can just pray however you want. But um, I invite the rest of you to come up and look that way because I'm going to read off the slide. You can put your heels against the thing. Well, probably not. You can serve a circle, do a circle. No, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. I can see right here. You can sit here. You can sit in there. Yeah. There you go. It's still, the circle's nice, so I like that. You can, all right, yeah. All right, so um, this is my myrrh and frankincense. If you're sensitive, let me know. It's not too bad. Nope. So, anybody want me to use plain oil? Yep. That's all right? All right. So, um, I'm going to... Uh, Pray, and then I'm going to put the oil on you. And what we do, it, since we're Christians, what do we put it in? <laughs> Sign of the cross, just like you do the water with baptism. And actually, um, some churches use this um, when the child is baptized. And so that's why this is actually used. Because <laughs> that was my old church. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, I can see it here. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Christ Jesus. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of God's wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace so that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ.
In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Good, I'm going to count it. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil as a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. You can, what? Oh, sure. Somebody want to do it? David will. <laughs> so you would see over my head. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace, that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Receive this oil a sign of wholeness and healing in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, you may return to your seats. Let us pray. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave hope to the hopeless. Look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the, pain of, in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We give, you thanks, we give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously protect us this night. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I don't know about announcements. I know that they're still needing some people to help throw candy at the 4th of July. I know that they're looking for people who could help at Bible school. Um, and that's kind of all I know. And so I think we're done here. So thank you for coming. <laughs>